So this is how the HPLC chart looks like. So if you see over here, all the parameters are normal. Okay, as such, if you see uh, the patient might be having, you know, they have a completely normal CBC or they might be mildly anemic. Okay, so what is very important? The HBA is is normal around 84 percent as we can see over here hbf is less okay around 1.5 percent but most important parameter is the hba2 that we see is around 4.7 percent as we can appreciate okay this is the a2 graph so as you can see this is the a2 and the percentage is given over here for the a2 okay it is uh, uh, basically if you see the a2 percentage is approximately given over here as 4.7 okay 4.7 percent as we can see so this is your a0 as we can appreciate over here this this is your F very small over here and this is your A2 that we can appreciate. So, A2 has increased approximately 4.7 percent. If you look at the MCV and MCH, they are low. After that, yeah. the next one is the HBE homozygous. HBE homozygous, always remember the A2 percentage will be in the range of 85 to 95 percent. And this much amount of A2 normally does not exist. It is the HBE that is eluting in the A2. So, when the HB level is 85 to 95, that is eluting at the A2 position. So, you can see this particular diagram over here. This is the HBE homozygous. So, this is basically if you see, this is your A2 area. The area covered by A2 over here is approximately 85 percent. And over here, if you see the normal hemoglobin HBA that you see, the normal hemoglobin is very less, approximately 3.4 percent only. So, this is basically first of all, this is a homozygous condition. It is a homo zygous condition and in HBE homozygous the amount of HBE is actually in the range of 85 to 95 percent okay so this A2 is basically nothing but it is the HBE and it is the majority hemoglobin that we see in HBE homozygous now in HBE homozygous you will see that the anemia is quite mild okay myself Dr. Gibran Amal presents to you simply pathology and today we are back with a very important video Today, we are going to read about HPLC charts. Now, before we start with today's topic of discussion, it is highly recommended for you students to first go and see my lecture on HPLC. After that, only you will be able to understand this particular topic. So, the description to this video is given in the description box. You can go to the link of the video HPLC and you can watch that video. And after that, you can come back and see this very important topic that is the HPLC chart. Now, for the postgraduate residents especially, okay, for the PG residents of pathology, this is very important because such charts, they are brought by the examiner and they will be asked to you in your practical exam. So, you should be very well versed with these charts. Not only that, once you, uh, you know, pass out and once you start to practice, so you might have to interpret these charts and you might have to leave reports, okay. So, with this uh, setting, we are going to st start today's topic of discussion. So, whatever charts I am going to show you, it is uh, basically the variant hemoglobin testing system, the library of chromatograms from BioRad. So, we are basically, uh, you know, we are going to base out of that and I am also going to show some personal charts as well that is from my college. So, first of all, we should understand that how the normal adult sample is, okay. So, normal sample adult, okay. So, if you see over here, okay, this is the HPLC chart that we can appreciate over here. So, uh, basically the percentage of the analyte is on the y axis and basically the retention time that we see it is on the x axis. So, we have already discussed in detail what an HPLC chart is, what are the different components that we have already seen. Over here, only the interpretation is what we are going to see, okay. So, basically if you see this is a normal sample as you can see all the parameters are basically normal. So, over here normally in a normal adult the HBA, the normal HBA that is there you can see it is in the range of 96 to 98 percent. So, if you can see over here okay it is uh, quite high over here okay. See A0 will become maximum the A2 levels are less than 3.5 percent as we can see. So, this is the basic okay this is the normal A0, okay, this is the A2, okay, over here we are having the HBF and the di different analytes that we get. So, this is the normal, uh, you know, normal adult sample that we see, okay. This is the normal sample that we see over here. This is from our college, one chart that we are looking over here. So, the uh, hemoglobin F, it is less than 1 percent, approximately 0 0.9 percent and the A2 concentration is less than 3.5, over here is 2.6. So, we can see the A2 over here, we can see the A0 over here, okay. So, this is the basic normal sample that we see. 
Now comes the first very important chart that is the beta thalassemia trait. Now before we go on to see the charts, always remember that for you know for your ultimate easiness, okay, just remember you know at the start of every chart, I have given certain important points and details that is going to help you to diagnose that particular chart. So remember one thing: normally the HbA2 levels are less than 3.5 percent. The HbA2 levels normally less than 3.5 percent. Okay. Now in the range, okay, if it is more than four, in the range of four to nine percent, if A2 is increased, then it is characteristically diagnostic of beta thalassemia trait. Always remember, if it is in the borderline range of 3.5 to 4 percent, then we keep the patient in follow up, okay, and then we repeat the test, okay. So, if it is in this range, then you cannot diagnose it as be a thalassemia trait, okay. You have to repeat and keep the patient in follow up because this is in the borderline range. This is what we follow in our medical college, okay. So, this is how the HPLC chart looks like. So, if you see over here, all the parameters are normal, okay. As such, if you see, uh, the patient might be having, you know, they have a completely normal CBC or they might be mildly anime, okay. So, what is very important, the HBA is, is normal around 84 percent as we can see over here. HBF is less, okay, around 1.5 percent. But most important parameter is the HBA2 that we see is around 4.7 percent as we can appreciate okay this is the a2 graph so as you can see this is the a2 and the percentage is given over here for the a2 okay it is uh, uh, basically if you see the a2 percentage is approximately given over here as 4.7 okay 4.7 percent as we can see so this is your a0 as we can appreciate over here this is your f very small over here and this is your a2 that we can appreciate so a2 has increased approximately 4.7 percent if you look at the mcv and mch they are low they are low okay and uh, the rbc count is 6.57 million per cubic millimeter and uh, basically the mcv and the mch it might also be normal okay in case the beta thalassemia trait is coexisting along with the alpha thalassemia okay now i will show you another chart for the beta thalassemia trait now this was the chart where the hemo uh, hba2 levels was in the range of 4 to 7 percent and the anemia was quite mild okay or there was not present actually but this is an, an, another case of beta thalassemia trait where the HbA2 level is little bit high in the range of 7 to 9 percent. In this particular case, if you look at the A2 levels over here, it is approximately 7.5 percent and the MCV, MCH is again low. Hemoglobin is quite low. So, the amount of, uh, you know, uh, you know, th there is a more reduction in the beta globin chain synthesis in this particular case as compared to this case. But both the cases, they are mild only, okay. They are mild only. There is mild anemia over here and this case was completely normal okay there wasn't anything in this case but this case is having mild anemia so you can see the hba2 level is increased up to the range of 7.5 percent okay and there is a low mcv mch in this case as we have appreciated in this particular diagram so the most important point in the diagnosis of beta thalassemia trait as i told you it should be in the range of four to nine percent okay four to nine percent normally this level is less than 3.5 okay now we are going to go ahead now and we are going to study about yes this is another chart from our college okay this is your classical beta thalassemia trait as we can see okay so basically this is your a0 chart okay this is your f this one this small one the, the uh, hbf is normal 0.8 as we can see the a2 concentration if you see is approximately 5.3 percent so it is raised so this is your classical beta thalassemia trait okay so it is very very important that you people um, you, you know try and understand and interpret the chart because these charts will be given in the exam now we are going to see the beta thalassemia major now, predominantly, usually the HBF levels are more than 85 percent. It is very, very high. The HBA levels, that is the normal hemoglobin that is present in adult in, in maximum quantity is very less, is less than 3 percent. And the HBA2 level, it might either be decreased, it might be normal or it might be increased. Either of these three can be there. But the most important point are the HBF levels are very high. HBF levels are normal in beta thalassemia minor. Okay, so if we see in this condition, first of all, if we see the patient is severely anemic in nature, the patient is severely anemic. Now, if you see over here, as I told you, the HBF levels are more than 85 percent. So, as you can see, you can see a very high HBF peak. So, the F window is 91.3 percent comprising of HBF. 
okay that is the majority of the hemoglobin is in this particular form and the patient is severely anemic as you can see the hemoglobin is around 4.6 grams per deciliter so this is a classical presentation of beta thalassemia major now this is the beta thalassemia major that was diagnosed in our institute that we had seen so again you can see the hbf concentration is approximately 80 percent over here usually they say it is more than 85 percent but it can it might be you know somewhere near 80 also is acceptable so this was also a beta thalassemia major case okay wherein you can see and you can also see in this condition the a2 level is also increased but as i told you in beta thalassemia major the a2 levels can decrease can be normal can be increased as well so the major thing is that the hbf levels will be very high okay now one very important thing is that hbf levels in thalassemia major okay it can range in the range of 30 to 95 percent but usually it is more than 80 percent or 85 percent usually more than this but it is in the range of 30 to 95 percent okay now we are going to see the new chart that is the HBE heterozygous. So first of all, let me tell you normally the A2 levels are less than 3.5. In thalassemia trait, we said that the range is 4 to 9 percent. But over here in HBE heterozygous, usually the average amount of HBE is basically 30 percent. Why am I showing you all together? Because in the HPLC chart, okay, A2 okay a2 range in the a2 range that is coming 4 to 9 percent in the hbe in the hplc chart is also eluting at the same location as the a2 so hbe also eludes at the same location and over here the a2 percentage in hplc will come very high it is not actually the a2 level that is the hbe levels okay so let me show you this particular chart so as you can appreciate over here this is a0 okay you can appreciate this is the f very small curve and this curve that you can appreciate this is the a2 so basically this is not the real hba2 what it is that this is basically hbe and this hbe normally it starts to elute okay it starts to elute at the a2 position only so you have to appreciate when the a2 levels when the a2 levels are very high approximately 30 to 35 percent the levels of a2 is there and the normal A0 is also present in approximately 60%, 50-60%. That means, first of all, it is a heterozygous condition. It is a heterozygous condition because normal A0 is present in good amounts. Okay. Now, very importantly over here, in this HPLC, we can see the A2 levels are approximately 32.3% and the normal HBA is 59.3%. That means, it is a heterozygous. And always remember, the A2 levels cannot be so much high. Okay, it is the HBE that is eluting at the A2 that is basically going that is why the percentage is coming as 32% but it is actually the amount of HBE. Always remember the anemia in HBE hetero as well as homozygous the anemia is quite mild or there might not be anemia as well. Okay, but the MCV MCH might be normal it can be low as well. So this is very important HBE heterozygous. Okay, so this is another chart over here. We see the A2 concentration. The mean value is approximately around 30%. You will get the A2, but this is not A2. This is the HBE that is eluting. So this is the area is the A2, but it is actually the HBE that is eluting in the same position at, as A2. So when the levels are approximately in this range, and along with that, the A0 is also normal, approximately 60-65% like that. This is the A0. Then it is mainly HBE heterozygous hbe heterozygous okay okay after that the next one is the hbe homozygous hbe homozygous always remember the a2 percentage will be in the range of 85 to 95 percent and this much amount of a2 normally doesn't exist it is the hbe that is eluting in the a2 so when the hb level is 85 to 95 that is eluting at the a2 position so you can see this particular diagram over here this is the hbe homozygous so this is basically if you see this is your a2 area the area covered by a2 over here is approximately 85 percent and over here if you see the normal hemoglobin hba that you see the normal hemoglobin is very less approximately 3.4 percent only so this is basically first of all this is a homozygous condition it is a homo zygous condition and in hbe homozygous the amount of hbe is actually in the range of 85 to 95 percent okay so this a2 is basically nothing but it is the hbe and it is the majority hemoglobin that we see in hbe homozygous now in hbe homozygous you will see that the anemia is quite mild okay 
homozygous also anemia is quite mild as we can appreciate from this diagram. This is another chart from our college if you see the A2 concentration is 93.23%. Uh, it is this is nothing but this is the HBE and if you see the A0 level that is very less approximately 4%. So basically this is the HBE homozygous. It is HBE homozygous. This is the classical chart that we can appreciate over here. This is your basic A2 where your HBE has eluted. Okay. I think this is very clear to everyone. Now comes the most important and the tricky parts okay that is the double